Close your eyes and let your attention settle down with the breath. Take some good long deep in and out breaths and see if you can make the breath comfortable. You can make it longer, shorter, deeper, shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Try to see what rhythm and texture of breathing feels good for you right now. And if your mind slips off, remind yourself, okay, you're leaving a good place, going to some place that's not so good. So come on back. This is one of the reasons why we meditate, is because the mind has a tendency to wander into all kinds of things that are going to cause it trouble. And you can tell it to stay, and as long as you're paying very careful attention, it may stay. But then as soon as your mindfulness slips or your alertness slips, then it's off. You have to make it want to stay here, so try to make the breath comfortable. Because this is something that you can exert some control over. We live in a world in which so many things are outside of our control. The things we read about in the newspapers, there's very little we can do to change that. Other people make decisions, and there's very little t opportunity you have to change their decisions. But how about your own decisions? Those are the things you have to really look into, because those are things that you can exert some control over. This is why the Buddha, when he recommends equanimity, he says there's skillful equanimity and unskillful equanimity. He doesn't say that you should just not care about anything. He said you could, should care very much about the choices you're making in your life, what you're going to do, what you're going to say, what you're going to think. Where do those choices come from? They come from the mind. And if the mind is in bad shape, what kind of choices are you going to get? Well, bad choices. So you have to learn how to get the mind into good shape. And a mind in good shape is a mind that is still solidly here in the present moment, with a sense of well-being. So that when it moves from that sense of well-being, it moves because it knows there's something that should be done, something should be said, something should be thought. And then when you're done, you can come right back. It's like recharging your phone. If you just carry the phone around all day without recharging, it's going to run out. You come back and you charge up again. And ideally, that if you can Stay with the breath even as you're going through the day. That means you're constantly charging it, and it's ready, 100% charged. So that when some difficult situation comes up or a difficult choice comes to be made, the mind has a lot more energy. And it's coming from a sense of strength, a sense of well-being. It's more likely to do the right thing. If you're coming from a sense of weakness, it's hard to be generous. It's hard to be virtuous. It's hard to be generous because you feel poor. It's hard to be virtuous because you feel threatened by this person, the other person. But if you've got a position of strength inside that nobody else can touch, then it's a lot easier to be generous, a lot easier to be virtuous. It's a lot easier to have a good impact on the world. So looking after your mind like this is not just for you, it's also for the people around you. Get some control over the things that you should be able to control. And as for things you can't control, well, that's where equanimity is useful because you're not wasting your energy concerned about things that are, lie totally outside your control. And this is one of our problems, is we keep looking for ways we can change other people without come, turning around and saying, well, how, about, can, how can I change myself for the better? You become a person who's more generous, a person who's more virtuous. You have more goodwill for yourself and goodwill for the people around you. That, the Buddha said, is is a name for happiness. The actions we do to create what they call merit, these are all things that are just another name for happiness. So when you're looking for happiness, ask yourself, you're looking at for happiness where you amass things for yourself or where you're more generous? When you take advantage of other people's weaknesses or are you more virtuous? If you're acting on ill will for other people or where you have good will? If you look at your mind, you have no will, ill will for anybody. It's a good mind to look at. So practice these practices. Get some control over your mind so that you can be in control of what really matters and where you really can exert rightful control. And everything else will fall into line.